what's up guys welcome back again to my channel <laughs> yeah what's up guys don't mind my voice welcome back again to my channel and uh, it's your boy victory from bm studios and if you're new to this channel please don't forget to like and subscribe after watching this video subscribe before you leave in fact subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you my friend does not miss any tutorial trick tips in photoshop so yeah i told you guys i'll be sending a lot of videos so here again i'm going to be teaching you another wonderful trick in photoshop for now you can add overlays to suit your image perfectly we have thousands of overlays you can use for for your pictures but the major thing is what makes your pictures stand out is to actually know which overlays goes for which particular subject that is one of the challenge most photographer face when it comes to overlay manipulations so today i'm going to be teaching you how to add overlays to suit the taste of your subjects without further ado let's get started so uh these are before i'll be showing you guys how we get to move from this to this amazing right i know so let's get started so uh, you already know if you are if you've been in this channel for a while now you already know what to do so we just duplicate a background layer duplicate once duplicate uh, twice so this is our subject layer we name the subject then this is our background layer so we name it pg so we have to separate the subjects from the background so just click on your power selection to here by the way i'm using photoshop cc 2018 so if you're using higher version of photoshop immediately you click any selection to here you see select subject so you can just click on select subject and it does selection for you the perfect selection but if you're using lesser version you have to pick any selection to and start uh, selecting your subjects but I've already saved you that stress for the video for this particular video. But if I, start, if I start doing it now, it makes it's gonna make the video a little bit slack. So I don't want to do that. So I'm just gonna do Ctrl Z and over that. So I already selected the subject. I'll just go down to my select and uh, load my selection. So I'll just click on uh, subject and click OK. So here you go. With my subject selected, I'll just click on. I'll just mask it and click on my layer mask here. So you separate my subject from my background so this is my subject now i have to have a background layer separate because in my background layer i'm still having my subject here so to do that i'll just hold my control and uh, click on layer mask here it brings out the selection then with my background layer selected i'll just right click click on the field and uh, continue that way oops sorry it's telling me could not fill because there's nothing of memory so uh, guys i'm really, really sorry for this just give me a minute uh how we have to restart to shop so most times you experience these kind of issues if your storage or your hard disk is getting feed up and many things are running your background is in no memory to trigger content away feed so most times you have this issue so just give me a minute uh how we have to reset, reset, start uh to shop and all that so Sorry about this, guys. Uh, so we'll just go to the shop, and I think that will do the trick. So I'll just go to the shop again. So we allow this to load, and it's going to come up. So this particular stuff I'm showing you now it can work for any features. Just apply the same principles, and you get. I can guarantee you, you get the same result absolutely every time. So with this done, you just right click on your control, click on the selection, uh, right click and connect that way, and connect that way is going to feed that. So we allow the process to load and uh, it's going to remove our subject and feed that place, that will pose with the background. So here we go. So we just select this and these are background layers separately these are subject layers separately so remember i told you guys our last video that normally you can just pick any of your selection tree and start to fill out this uh extra and all that but all i normally do is that i duplicate my background layer just in case there's an error so i can normally come back to my original background so with my let's start to 
you select it, I'll just select all the stuff here. And uh, right click, click on fill, and I'll connect that way. It's going to do that for me. So, there you go. Just go to the, it's not actually looking perfect, but we are we're going to do this one. So you can just do this and uh, take your time and get the straight in the background and all that. The more you're doing, it's not looking a little bit rough now, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to leave it like this. And you can go back to your last side to make a selection. This is looking a little bit too unpushed, so we have to uh, clean it up. So you just select the background and right click, press it to the two. So the next thing you can do, you know, during the process of shooting, most times some of our colors fade out, some are contrasting and all that. Even while setting your white balance, your camera and all that, some of the colors looks does not appear the way they are supposed to appear. Take a look, for example, this our background here. It's supposed to be looking a little bit yellowish or brownish, but now the color is a little bit fainting and all that because of color cast and all that. So what you can do to pop this out a little, you can simply just come to your Layer, click on the saturation. You can just put the saturation up a little bit to add a little bit of uh, saturation to make the color pop out a little and all that. And you can decide to darken it a little or brighten it. It's entirely up to you. So I'll just leave my lightness at zero, then post my saturation up a little bit to maybe 18. So these are before, these are after. But the next thing I think I can do now is just to bring in my overlay. So the overlay I'll be using for this is. Uh, Using this overlay, this ribbon overlay here, we just drag this and bring it to Photoshop. So, so I'll just put open my image. Okay, so this is my working environment. This is my ribbon we'll be using for that. For this teacher. I know some of you might be wondering, okay, let's just select this control A, the control C to copy, you come back to my document and control B to paste. I know some of you may be wondering uh, this overlay is not going to work perfectly for this image. They are having different colors, they are contrasting and all that. The colors are not fitting in. They are having blue, they are having yellow, they are having uh, purple, they are having uh, dark blue and all that. And the image just black and red. It's not actually fitting, it's a little confusing, it's a little distracting, it's not appealing and all that. The colors are fighting themselves. Come on, I know, but this is the magic. Most times you don't actually get the perfect. Uh, colors or perfect overlays that works with your image. All you have to do is just a little tweak and trick, and everything looks balanced. So for this, I actually love the ribbon, the way it's flying and all that. I feel okay. This is actually what I need for this image. Image. But the only issue I'm having here is that uh, the colors are not fitting in. They are looking bit of. They are looking a little bit odd and all that. But I felt okay since the colors are like that. I think I can actually tweak the colors to make it fit into my subject so what i'll do is 
normally when you put her over lace, you can play with any of your blending mood here. Yeah, no which one works best for you. But personally, I love to use multiply overlay and soft light a lot. These are my best ones. Multiply overlay and soft light. And the beautiful thing about Photoshop is that there's no rules. It doesn't. You are not stick with just one blending mode. You can use as much as you want just to give your image that attractive look. So for this, I'll just go to my. Remember what multiply does is that it takes away the brightness and keeps the shadows, or keep it takes away the bright part and keeps the dark part. While I overlay is just blend the two together. It makes the place that are bright bright, makes the place that are dark darks. That's what our overlay layer does. Sorry, our overlay blending mode does rather. So with my uh, ribbon layer selected, I'll just name this ribbon. With my ribbon layer selected, I'll just change the blend like problem solved <laughs> you can see that it's taking away the white the darkest part of the colors and it's not leaving me with the brightest part and this alone has popped out my color it has made the yellow even a little bit yellowish and makes let me take this back to normal and makes this dark red that is looking a little bit of purple it makes it pure red just turning it to multiply you can see the magic is looking so much appealing so what we have to do is just to take down the opacity a little bit and so that we can see some part of our original background layer coming in just to make it fit so you can take your body down with one this is looking amazing you just imagine changing just the blending mode of our ribbon layer has made our image looks so much interesting it has add, added a little so much dimension to our image popping it out so if you, if you feel this okay but this is okay for you you can actually just stop here and you're good to go but if you feel okay let me just add some little things to make it an image pop out a bit too come on let's go together so these are before these are after you can see okay the yellow is looking a little bit yellowish let me add some red to the yellow that is fine all you have to do is just come to your adjustment layer click come to selective color you just go to the yellows Okay, let me add a little bit of red to the yellow. Now nah, we have to clip this to our ribbon layer. We don't want it to affect our entire image. But if you see as I'm moving, it's affecting the entire image. I don't want that, so I'll just clip it to my ribbon layer. So we can add a little bit of red to the yellow. Add a little bit of increase the yellow a little. Uh, let's pop, pop it out a little. Okay, let's darken it to make it look a little bit yellowish. Now we can do the same thing for the red. We can add the red. We add a little bit of uh, magenta, add a little bit of yellow to the red, and make it darker or make it brighter. It just depends on you. If you can brighten it, you can darken it. But I think darken it works better here. So these are before, these are after. You can see they are popping out. So that is basically everything you need to know. It's, it's a very simple process. Just find the valley that works best for your image, or rather, the valley that will complement your image. Having that is the first step to an appealing image. Once you can puff, once you can choose which overlay, or once you can get be able to get an overlay that works well with your image, that makes your image done. I bet you 75% of your work is done. So that's basically everything you need to know about in this particular video. So if you have any issues, just drop your comment in the, your questions rather in the comment section. But you can see there's a lot of things we still have to do here we have to collaborate and all that but basically i'm just showing you how to add the overlays to your image but if you feel okay i have to do other things to make this image look appealing like i need to blend the background with the subject to make everything blend and shine out and all that where you can use my my uh orange i love orange a lot but for kids and adults should and only use orange so if you think okay There are still some things you need to do. You can just add some color with them and all that to make your image stand out. You can use selected colors and all that. We already have the loot you can use, which I I used in my previous uh, video. It's a very wonderful loot. So we just come to my uh, selective color, my adjustment layer, click on color local table. We are going to add the yellowish orange, so just load this up. it has added a ton of orange to this image but come on if you feel okay the saturation is too much and all that you can always bring down the opacity just keep it down a little these are before these are after then what 
one thing I normally love doing is to add some contrast to it, darken some part, of, especially the edges of the image, to make it look fitting, to make the image really blending. So what I'll do is I'll just click on my uh, create a new layer here, just click on my gradient feed, gradient through, just drag this off. Come back to my color look of table. I'm going to add another look to this. I'll be adding the cinematics here and I'll click load. Amazing, right? So, my friend, uh, these are before, these are after, these are before, these are amazing, right? Don't forget, I'll be dropping the overlays I use for this particular image in the description. You can always download and practice with them. Then if you have any questions, you can drop them in, in the comment section. Okay guys, that's basically it for today's tutorial. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Don't just subscribe. Ring the bell my friend so that you don't get to miss our upcoming videos. Thanks so much for watching and love you guys. See you.